Wah, wah. Okay. Hello, hello. Today we're gonna be having like a kind of chill stream. Um, we're not playing. We're not playing Mortuary Assistant because I'm too much of a baby to play that. But we are gonna be playing a mortician's tale. Anyway, hello, I'm Barrels. I'm a marigold. Lost my tails. I <laughs> lost my tail because I prayed to the sky gods and the lake got mad at me and take all of my scales. Um, yeah, today we're gonna be playing a mortician's tale. I'm gonna be reading the description from like the the itch.io um, page because I got this from the Ukraine bundle. And uh, wait, let me read it out. A Mortician's Tale is a story-driven, death-positive video game where you play as a mortician tasked with running a funeral home. Take on the role of recent funeral direction graduate Charlie as she learns the ropes of the business and industry, prepare the bodies of the deceased by embalming or cremation, attend their funerals and listen to their loved ones' stories, and interact with Charlie's co-workers, clients, and bosses. This actually has... um. A bunch of awards it got like what's this finalist nu nuovo award igf 2018 honorable mention excellence in narrative igf 2018 fantastic arcade official selection 2017 and day of the devs official selection 2016 it has like a very nice aesthetic it has a lot of purple so it caught my eye okay let us now start the game Where's my where's my thing? Start new game. September 14, 10:15 a.m. See, it has a lot of purple. Okay, uh, so it's just point and click then. Can I? Okay, I can move by clicking. Um, this this must be the cremation thing. This is where we're gonna be embalming, and let's check our mail first. Here you go, girl. You go read that mail. She has tattoos, if you've seen like the thumbnail. Ray, hello and welcome to our new funeral director. From Matthew Jeffrey to Charlie. Welcome Charlie, nice to meet you. My name's Matthew and I'm mainly going to be the man who delivers the bodies to you. And helps with some of the... Eh? And helps with some of the more heavy lifting. Ever heard that joke about a hearse? How do you pronounce here's hearse? First driver, I'll tell it to you when I come in and uh, come by in a bit. Looking forward to working together. I think you'll enjoy working here. Amy is a sweetheart, but she runs a tight ship. Nothing you can't handle, I'm sure. She wouldn't have hired you otherwise. Cheers and good luck! Matthew J, funeral director. Rose and daughter's funeral funeral. Hmm. Hello and welcome to our new director. From Amy Rose to Rose and Daughter Staff. Hello everyone, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our new funeral director, Charlotte, or Charlie as she told me she likes to be referred to. Charlie is a recent graduate who came highly recommended and is eager to begin her career with us at, Ro at, at Rose and Daughter's Funeral Home. Kage-san! Welcome to the stream! Um, if you haven't seen it yet, we are playing a mortician still. It's more of a, it's more of a management game. It's like it's like a it's like mortuary assistant, but um chiller, and more um thought uh thought invoking. Blech. Anyway, please take the time to make Charlie feel at home within our little family. We'll have a nice catered lunch this afternoon, so we can all get to know each other a little better as well. Sincerely, Amy Rose, founder and director, Rose and Doris Funeral Home. Okay. Tips for good etiquette at the funeral. From Funerals Monthly to Subscriber, thanks for subscribing! Each month, we bring you a new newsletter featuring a topic pertaining to the death industry. This month is all about good etiquette for attending a funeral. I really can't believe we have to write this one out, but since we said we'll answer your most popular questions, here we are! Because this is des definitely one of the most popular questions. Funerals are a hard time and we understand that, but here are some quick and easy rules to remember for being respectful at the funeral. Generally, following the guidelines of don't be a jerk should work. Yasan! Welcome to the stream! <laughs> hello, hello, hello! Uh, I'm just like reading the emails. It's the, it's the first thing that we have to look through before we like actually go to the embalming part, I guess. Number one, don't be on your cell phone. We understand you're busy, but there's a time and a place. There's a time and a place to disengage. If you have to be on your cell phone, don't do so inside a funeral home. 
Number two, don't be loud and obnoxious. You can share happy stories, but other people are also grieving and working through their own healing process. Being quiet gives other people space they might need. Don't don't be a jerk. Don't be a jerk. That's all you need to know when you're in a funeral. I mean, during funerals, I just like stay quiet, uh, be in a corner and some shit. Sometimes I get the food, but other than that, I just keep keep to myself. Number three, don't get drunk. Everyone can deal with their emotions in their own ways. Just remember to be respectful when with the grieving family and friends. Number four, happily reminisce. Can you like, it's all a jewel, right? Let me know, okay? Sometimes remembering happy moments and positive experiences with the deceased can be a productive part of the healing process. Number five, give condolence. Condol condolences? It's not easy knowing what to say to someone. But even a simple I'm thinking of you can go a long way. Number six, dress appropriately. Don't go into a funeral like in a bikini unless that's what the dead person wanted you to go into. What this looks like will change based on the customs of the deceased and their culture. But always dress in a way that shows respect to the deceased and their grieving family. Number eight, Give a gift or sign the registration book. This can be flowers or a nice card, but it's the thought that counts here. Sometimes this can even just uh, this can be even just cooking dinner for the grieving family. Anything that shows you care and want to help them through the healing process is what matters here. Be kind and be helpful. Actually, uh, in our place in the Philippines, um, we often like give food to the family because the wake wake is it called the wake? Like um, like the body would be at home for like how many days? I think about a week or so, three days a week. So like the friends and family could visit, and then a lot of them would like bring snacks or food for everyone to share with stuff like that. So we got that here. Today's tasks. Wait, I think um uh, we read this. We read this. Oh wait, these are instructions. So we read this. We read the tips. Okay, instructions. Hello, Charlie. Well, you're new here, so it's probably best I explain where everything is. No, 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 not three week, not three weeks, like um, like three days or a week, something like that. Well, you're new here, so it's probably best I explain where everything is. In your office preparation room, you'll find your cremation station, cremulator station, and embal embalming station, and obviously, since you're reading this email, your desk and computer area. Yeah, days, days. I know you have experience working with these stations, but please let me know if you have any questions. Best Amy Rose, founder and director, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we got the instructions. Um... Good luck, you beautiful and smart baby from Jen Love to Charlie. Ha, huh, I guess my subject line to you should start being more professional now. Now that we are business professionals, I can't wait to get your reply so I can see your fancy new email signature. I love that you were able to land this gig straight after graduating. It sounds super cool. I didn't even know mom and pop funeral homes were a thing until now. Guess it's just not something I really think that much about. I should look more into this. Learn more about your world and industry because, as I said, you are now a very serious professional. Speaking of being a professional, my museum gig is amazing. I can't believe somebody paid me to move to London and not London ON, serial killer capital of Canada. Is that like supposed to be a state? Anyway, I fucked up. To work in a museum. Like, take that everyone who said I couldn't get a job with an art history degree. I'll tell you more about it when we Skype. My stories require you to see my face and that you hear my excellent British accent impersonation. Also, I signed you up for a funerals monthly newsletter. Consider it your graduation gift. I love you. I'm super proud of you, gift. Love you, love you, love you. Jen L. Museum, museum curator, London Pathology Museum. Sheesh. They're in the big leagues now. Okay, so finally, we're gonna go with today's task. Okay, after, after that long intro. Today's task from Amrose Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Hope you settled in okay so far. Matthew should have dropped off your first body for you to work on. He said you were really friendly and he's glad to have someone young and lively to work with. You'll get used to his sense of humor. Your first body is Mrs. Garcia, an elderly woman who died suddenly of a heart attack. The family has asked for a closed casket funeral, so no embalming or body preparation is necessary. The family seems a little bored 
a little bit more united than previous families we've dealt with. Strange how grief affects people differently. Perhaps having more time to say goodbye makes things a bit easier if that's possible. That being said, although you will not be embalming Mrs. Garcia, I do think it's, it's important to take the time to clean her body. No one is going to see her body, but I'd like to encourage my funeral directors to do this out of respect for the deceased and their loved ones. You'll find Mrs. Garcia in the prep room. Talk soon. Okay. Oh wait, what's this? Special request for my mother's funeral. From Amy Rose to Mia Garcia. Dear Mia, of course we will happily oblige your request for no embalming and for a closed casket. I'll ensure our funeral director receives your request. Oh, okay, so this is what it is. And this is like uh, from their, from their, uh, from their daughter, I presume. Dear Amy, we're happy to be with Rose and Doris for my mother's funeral. We understand that there are pr usually procedures that must be followed in these situations, but if you could kindly not embalm my mother, that would greatly that would greatly appreciate. And we will proceed with a closed casket for the service. I just know she wouldn't have wanted her death to have any negative impact on the environment, and since she fought so hard to beat her heart disease and to live healthily. It would be a shame to have her final moments to be countered the way she lived. Thank you for anything you can do to help us in this matter. Best, Mia. Alright, so... Let's like, uh, reply with an auto response. Sure thing, I'll get right to it. And now we're finally getting to the game. Okay, this is Mrs. Garcia. Oh, she's gray now. Let's get in. Let's get into the embalming. Oh wait, no, no, we're not supposed to do the embalming. We're just gonna have to like clean her up. This is a prep room where you will prepare bodies for burials and viewings. Because the family has requested a closed casket ceremony with no embalming, you are just going to clean the body. Click on the sponge and drag it over the body to clean. This is a sponge, right? Let me right there. See, I told you it's like mortuary assistant. Except I'm the funeral director. I have a hire. I'm not an apprentice. I I I'm the the big balls. <laughs> That's it. You're done. Mrs. Garcia will be sent to Mike, who will take care of dressing and putting her in the casket. Okay. It's time to go to Mrs. Garcia's funeral. You are responsible for taking care of the deceased body, but it is also important to pay your respects to their loved ones. Yeah, and less scary. It's really chill and like. The art style is more, <laughs> is kinder to my eyes. Follow the arrow to head to the funeral parlor. Okay. Okay, we've cleaned you up, Mrs. Garcia. We're gonna head off um, to their family and like talk. Okay, I've covered my tattoos. Alicia Koi, welcome! Welcome to the stream! How are you doing? Um, I just finished um, cleaning up a dead person's body and now we're in their funeral. Okay. I can't even get the food in their in their funeral. That's the first thing I go to. No joke. I, I don't want to be so disrespectful to the dead. Okay, okay, let's talk to them. Yeah, I heard the family specifically said no embalming. I thought it was mandatory, like required by law, but I guess not. Embalming weirds me out. Do those chemicals leach into the ground? Seems great. Actually, um, the reason why the font can be like this is because I have it on the largest setting. Because it's gonna be hard for me to read. Sounds like a good day. I'm fine. And you here? I'm just like, I just finished working on some commissions and now I'm just like playing this game to chill. Also, I'm interested why the, why it got so many like awards and shit. I wanted to know what makes it so nice. Plus, it's death adjacent, the the whole game, um, which is kind of into the theme of our, not really horror week, but more of like Halloween and All Saints All Souls Day um, week celebration. Though better not to say too soon for all we know, it might suddenly turn horror. It won't, it won't, I don't think it will. Embalming risk, do those? Oh, okay. Seems strange to be using a chemical that is known to cause cancer and putting it into the ground like that. Or into the sewer, that's what they must do with the leftover form formaldehyde, right? Just pour it down the drain? At least embalming guarantees you won't be buried alive. <laughs> Stop it, don't make me laugh right now. Okay, how about the kid? Are you? Are you? Mommy, I'm hungry, can we? Uh, when can we go? This is this kid is me when I was younger, whenever we went to funerals. i just be like, I'm always after the food. Now you're still talking. Oh, 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 he's sad. 
I hate wearing pantyhose. My legs are so itchy, but it's always so cold in these funeral homes. Felt. And it is, it is really cold. I remember, like, I think it was my... Oh, no, it was my uncle. I was really young back then. And I was like, it was so cold in the funeral home. Like, freezing. I don't know why. It was just so cold. But, but, but if you went out, it's so fucking hot. I mean, that's... I guess that's just the Philippine weather for you. I think I might actually miss those sweaters she used to knit for me now. Oh, no. I guess it's the... It's a grandma. It's a grandma who died out of a heart attack. Okay, how about you, sir? Who are you? We usually don't small talk a lot of these things. At least it's what I was always thought. Can we go to grandma and pay our respects? Mrs. Garcia, I hope... I hope you have... I mean, I hope you had a nice life even though you died of a heart attack. I hope the afterlife is kind to you. She would have hated these paintings. She was so particular. Yeah, at least she doesn't have to see them, I guess. I felt that. <laughs> That's... <sighs> yeah, I guess. It's like it's more refreshing because um it's more refreshing to hear these kinds of cause I'd say these are normal things in a funeral. Like like grieving is normal, but like people having these thoughts in a funeral is also normal. And I think they are also like valid to have these thoughts. Like I I don't know how to explain. It's just we're human. We 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 can't constantly be like thinking about bad things and Especially in the funeral, I think it's much better for us to like respect that person's life and like try not to get too down about it and be like more happy that that they lived, you know, they got to live with us or stuff and stuff like that. Anyway, goodbye, Mrs. Garcia. Sleep well. October 11, 10:09 a.m. Oh, we're just cleaning up. Okay, let's read our email. Come on, girly. We have such cool tattoos. Look at that. It's more clear in the thumbnail, by the way. Okay. I am so frustrated right now. From Jennifer Valentine to Charlie. Okay, so let me explain this in a bit more detail. A colleague and I were discussing... Oh, wait, is this person different? Rose and Daughters. Oh, damn. So this is our website. Okay. Okay, so let me explain this in a bit more detail. A colleague and I were discussing the tie placers, the liver specimen we have here at the museum. Oh wait, is this the same girl that we were taught? The oh yeah, she is. Jen, oh she is. She is that that gal. I forgot what voice I did for her, but anyway. It's from a woman who died in 1907, and the, the, the liver is tapered inwards from what the doctor leading the autopsy believed was too tight lacing on her corset. It's fascinating because it's kind of a controversial topic. Tight lacing was super popular, and while people associated it with like fainting or hysteria, sigh. Yeah, hysteria was bad, 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 bad. It's, I, I don't know, if I remember correctly, it was like um, very stereotypical like women hysteria back then it's actually been associated with visceroptosis i don't know what that is which oh wait she explains she explains it anyway which is when the organs fall to the lower part of the abdomen right which is super unsettling but can also be caused by being pregnant so tldr courses probably messed up some bones but likely didn't do this kind of internal organ damage and i'm tired of the condescension about my wardrobe that also implies i don't know what i'm doing ah is it because she wears a lot of corsets you go girl these are the kinds of things I specifically research and yet I'm treated like I know nothing about it I'm having a day Charlie this is real <laughs> when you're a specialist in something and then they don't believe you like when, when, when for example like a doctor talks about how you should be how you should be like treating yourself and like the person doesn't like listen to them instead listens to a TikTok video Detailing about you know conspiracy theories or whatnot about health and shit. Anyway, I'm so frustrated. Right now. Can I rant for just a second? I'm so tired of hearing strangers, colleagues, anybody cuff male colleagues cuff. <laughs> Get on my case for wearing corsets. I wear them under my blazer and over a nice blouse. 
So it's not like I'm dressing inappropriately, even though dress codes are such sexist bullshit anyways. And like, I hate how their misogyny gets veiled in Fox's concern. Jen, I'm just worried you're damaging your body. You know what corsets do to livers, right? Corsets don't do anything to livers. They're definitely not hurting me as much as your condensation is hurting my head. Uh, sorry. I'm out of sorts right now. I'll send you another email in a little bit when I've cooled off a bit. Okay, so I think we just need to like read from, from below uh, to up. Because they have like, like these like rare stuff. Anyway, next one. Next job. I'm not gonna like be reading. I'm not gonna respond uh, immediately because I wanna keep reading the emails. They're they're actually quite interesting. Next job from Amy Rose to Charlie. Hi Charlie, here are the instructions for your next body. You did a remarkable job on the first one. The family was very happy with you. No small feat, of course. Placing a grieving family isn't exactly the most comfortable of jobs. Your next job is a man named Mr. Duval, an elderly man, died of old age. Nothing fancy, just a standard funeral with embalming. You can reach out to his daughter Lizzie Duval if you have any questions. She's handling her father's passing as well as can be expected. As always, don't hesitate to ask me any questions. Okay, P.S. Charlie dear, please remember to wear proper embalming gear. Formaldehyde is extremely dangerous. I know I don't need to tell you, but my maternal instincts are too hard to ignore. I promise I won't mother you too much. Well, just a little. Ask Matthew. He knows. Okay. Okay, so these are the things. These must be the, the daughter. Hi, Amy. Please pass along our deepest thanks to you and your staff for the wonderful job they did with our, mother, eh, with our mother's funeral. It was really lovely. Our family so rarely gets together. It was nice seeing everyone come out for such a beautiful service. My son never gets to see his family. Also, it was incredibly kind of you to let us bring your, our own food in. Getting to share home-cooked meals, sharing stories, being there together, it was... It meant a lot. So, what I'm saying is, it was nice for everyone to be there like that, together in that way. And I know how much of that was due to the work of your staff, especially your funeral director. Thank you for making this difficult time easier for all of us. And somehow, um, somehow, I mean not somehow, but like most of the time when when someone dies in the family, it usually turns into like a, a like a family reunion. And I guess it's kind of like um, one of the good things that come out of someone's death is that somehow it reunites um, folks like old ties and shit. It might not be like the best time to be reuniting, but it's like it's one of those good things that come out of it, right? Just passing this message this message along. Thanks for the hard work, Charlie. Okay, Matthew, a story about death. This is from Matthew, the one who like brings us the the dead bodies and stuff. Okay. Hey there, Charlie. I was driving around the other day, you know, taking our clients on their last trip around town, and I was thinking, strange, I know. <laughs> Did I ever tell you the first time I went to a funeral? I was a teenager, about to start university, and a friend of mine was killed. In a car accident, totally out of the blue. Really tragic stuff. Messed me and my friends up real good. But so the big day. We all got into our best suits and dresses and packed ourselves into a few cars. There were a lot of us. So we had to at least three different cars full of us, like clown cars, you know? Well, we're in the procession going to the cemetery, somebody in our car got a phone call from a friend in a different car. Turns out some asshat driver who doesn't, know to, eh, who doesn't know to not get in the way of a procession drove through the intersection and smashed straight into our friend's car. Oh, oh, okay. Nobody was hurt, thank god. But can you imagine getting that call? Anyways, one of my friends in the same car as me the one who got the phone call, hung up and started laughing. Just laughing her ass off in that way that makes you not sure if they're really just crying or if they've gone fully off the deep end. And she laughed. And then we all started giggling because, like, go figure. Life is messed up, you know. There's no moral, no point to that story, I guess. I just remember that story and wanted to tell you because we work with death all the time and I still sometimes get caught off guard by what that actually means. Oh, before you get any ideas, that has nothing to do with why I became a funeral director. That decision came totally later and is nothing unremarkable. 
Somebody has to do it, and I have a strong stomach, so why not? I'll see you in a bit, Charlie. Thanks, Matthew. Okay. What to wear when you're attending a funeral from a different culture? Oh, okay. We all know everyone wants to be respectful at funerals. Don't talk too loudly, be kind, smile, and refrain from making inappropriate jokes, at least around a grieving family. Hey, sometimes some people do need a little bit of a pick-me-up during such hard times, so are we the judge? I mean, that's real. That's real. Sometimes, sometimes, um, you, you need to crack some jokes to, like, lighten, lighten the mood, but you gotta, you gotta gauge. <laughs> <laughs> like if you're visibly seeing someone who's like crying their fucking eyes out and you're pretty sure they're 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 sensitive and not good with handling jokes like the one that you're about to pull, don't just don't just just keep it to yourself. Maybe like say it once they they've healed a bit, you know? A big part of that is knowing what to wear. Roman Catholic funerals tend to lean more to the formal black attire rule and it works for us. Did you know this goes back to the days of the Roman Empire, where people would wear black as a symbol for mourning? Black is universally the symbol for mourning though, and if you're attending a funeral that is from a culture that is not your own, it's important to understand this. Some colors have different meanings and despite your best intentions, the wrong choice could mean accidental offense. For example, in Hinduism and in Chinese cultures, white is a typical color for funerals. For Islam though, it is less about the color you are wearing and more about how modestly you are dressed. Refrain from wearing any elaborate jewelry and be respectful of your behavior. For Sikh funerals, color of the clothing isn't as important as its dressing modestly and being able to appropriately sit cross-legged. Actually, being respectful is just the number one rule for any funeral no matter what, really. Remember that, and please don't hesitate to ask what is and is it appropriate to wear. If you are intending to support a friend, family member, or partner, this day is not about you. Mm, remember, this day is not about you. So be sure to do whatever you can to be as respectful and supportive as possible. Even if that means not wearing what you're, so, what you're used to wearing at a funeral, or even if it just means asking how you can appropriately show your respects. Okay, so let's go off. Let's get right into our um, next body, Mr. Duval. Alright. Time. Uh, we'll be doing some embalming here. Okay. Let's clean you up, Sir Duval. Traditional burials typically require embalming, which preserves the body and prevents it from decomposing as quickly. Are those supposed to be maggots? Oh my god. Unless the family requests otherwise, all traditional bur burials will use embalming. Let's start by cleaning the body. Click on the sponge and drag it over the body to clean it. Okay, I'm cleaning him up. Oh wait, I don't think it's it's maggots. Maybe it's just hair. Maybe it's just, you know, body hair. Okay. Oh wait, I gotta clean this part too. Click on the razor and drag it over the body to shave it. Okay, this is our razor. Let's shave. See? I was right! It's hair! I'm not shaving off their nipples. I'm a good person. Okay, um... In order to break rigor mortis, you'll have to massage the body. Click and drag over the body to massage it. Like this. Mm, we're giving uh, Mr. Duval a nice massage. <laughs> Yo, huzzah! Yeah, we're giving them a nice massage. So that, you know, because rigor mortis is when um, the body gets like stuck um, or like they get so stiff and shit. So, yeah. The eyeballs deflate once the body starts decomposing. Click and drag an eye cup into each eye socket to give it shape. Uh, oh wait, I think it's this one. Yeah. There we go. We gave them some eye caps. To keep the eyes shut, you'll need to glue them. Click and drag the glue onto each eye to shut it. Uh, okay, so here's the glue. It's, it's a good thing that it's like arranged by order anyway, so uh, it's not as hard to you know to follow the mount sags and hollows once the body starts decomposing click and drag a cotton ball into the mount to give it shape okay okay to keep the mount from opening you'll need to suture it sh shut click and drag the yeah click and drag the needle and thread over the jaw to close it okay so okay Click and drag the lotion over the body to moisturize it. This prevents the skin from drying up. It's time to give you some moisturizations. 
Sir Duval, don't worry, we got you. Embalming removes. I, uh, embalming involves removing blood and replacing it with preserving chemicals. Click and drag the scalpel over the neck to make an incision. Okay, then we got the scalpel. Uh, there we go. And then we're gonna be putting the tube in. Going to need a tube for draining the blood. Click on the tube and drag it into the neck incision. Click on the cannula and drag it into the car. Is this? Is it this one? This one? And drag it into the onto the carotid artery. This is how you get the preserving chemicals into the bloodstream, like this. Okay. Now you need to connect the embalming machine to the cannula. Oh, cannula, bah. Grab some additional tubing and drag it to the cannula. So I'm gonna put it here. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Click on the bo uh, click the button on the embalming machine to turn it on. In order to evenly distribute the chemicals, you'll have to massage them through the body. Click and drag over the body to massage. Okay, here's another massage session, Mr. Duval. We got you, don't worry. We're just like taking out your blood and giving you some chemicals to preserve your body. It's all gonna be alright. I mean, you're dead and you don't feel anything anymore. But don't worry, your body is in our care, our precious care. Okay, just keep massaging. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling today, Sir Duval? I joke. He's not feeling anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Just have to massage. Calm our senses. Now, okay, great. Now let's sew up that incision. Click and drag the needle and thread over the incision to close it. So we do, 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 do. Okay. Almost done. We'll need to drain the organs of any remaining fluids. Click on the truck trucker? Trocar? Then click and hold on the abdomen until all the liquid has been drained. This one, right? Oh, oh, I have to hold it. Okay, okay. Boop. Just draining out those liquids. Those pee pee poo poo's bloodies. And you're done! Mike will take care of Mr. Duval's makeup, as well as dressing and putting him in his casket. Oh, so Mike... Mike? Then who's Machu? Wait, Machu's the one who like, drives the bodies to us and Mike's the one who does the makeup? Am I got that right? Or are they like the same person? Am I fucking up? Anyway. Alright, it's time to go to the funeral. Let's see what's up with Mr. Duval's um, family. Oh, he's there. Oh yeah, it's an open casket. Hello, hello! Came out of nowhere, I mean. It always sorta of does, doesn't it? Yeah, one minute you're laughing, having fun, and then next, poof, that person is gone. Just like, gone. Yeah, it's weird to think about for too long, like staring at the sun. I start to feel all fuzzy when I think about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So weird how our bodies just stop working like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's your regular intake of existential crisis when you work in a funeral parlor. I mean, they probably don't think about it too much already. Because they're like desensitized. Like, you know, working with death and all that. But sometimes I'll hit you, you know? You gotta you got think about that. And it's not really that bad thinking about that. You just gotta like try to think about it in a more positive light or in a way that can like improve, improve you somehow. Okay, let's talk to them. So strange not seeing most people wearing white. White? Yeah, I think it's different for different family members. I can't remember. I haven't gone to many traditional funerals, so mostly white, but like definitely not red, no matter what. Oh, are, are they like, uh, what, what, what religion or ethnicity are they? I, I actually don't know. He always wanted to hate to take his grandkids to the park, play catch. He loved playing catch. He drew a mean curveball, that's for sure. <laughs> Mr. Duval, oh my god. Look at this kid, he's just playing in his console. <laughs> this that was me. The, this was literally me during during uh, funerals I had to attend to when I was a kid. Just either like playing on my phone or my Game Boy Advance. Okay, let's talk to Mr. Duval. 
Let's talk to me. Let's give our respects to Mr. Duval. It was it was it was good to know you, even though it was it was such a short time. Anyway, off to our next body. December 2, 10.22 a.m. Okay. Let's go. What is it? What is it? Okay, cremation. Hello, Charlie. Today's funeral is for a woman who died from breast cancer. Nothing fancy, just a standard cremation. Please, don't hesitate to ask me if you have any questions. Actually, can we- can we- are we able to ask them any questions? I don't think so, even if we wanted to. Okay, from Amy. Okay. From Lizzie Duval to Amy Rose. Hi, Amy. Thank you for the wonderful evening you and your staff put together for my father's funeral. He wasn't always an easy man to get along with, but I'm glad to have seen him off in such a kind way. Thank you, Lizzie. Thank you, Lizzie. Ah. Passing on this lovely thank you note. Jen. Jen love. It's our girly. Meet cutes for death positive cuties. Charlie, I was doing some reading. I know. You hate when I try to give you dating advice. But hear me out. There's this dating site that's specifically for people working in the death industry. Okay, so maybe I'm a little worried for you. You haven't mentioned anybody new uh, since the breakup of like 2014. That we will never speak of again after this moment. But you're always saying how tired you get of people being scared to ask you about your days. So maybe meeting somebody in the industry isn't the worst idea. Just promise me you'll consider it, okay? It's harder for me to make sure you're seeing sunlight when I'm all the way across the ocean. I know you like a babe with pale skin and witchy gothy aesthetics are pretty hot right now, but vitamin D is still a good thing. I, I, know, I know you look like Pala. <laughs> I thought she was like into the same to the same gals that look like her. Anyway. Mom ran over. I'm going to try it out because turns out people get super scared off when you tell them you work in a museum filled with dead bodies. Do you know how not interesting other people find teratomas? Charlie, I didn't know we were this weird to outside people. I've been spoiled by having a best friend who is much of a weirdo as I am. Miss you. Let's grab a bottle of wine for our next Skype date. P.S. If you sign up for Dead Meat, isn't that the best name for a death industry dating website? Tinder will supply. You have to like me if you come across my profile or whatever. I'm not sure how it works just yet though. Okay. I, I love her best friend. <laughs> I, love bro I love voicing the these kinds of girls too. Okay. Matthew. Okay. Oh, oh wait. So let's read from here. Hey Matthew, this is embarrassing but it seems I miscalculated some of our income and I don't have enough to pay you this week. Would it be terribly inconvenient if I cut you a check for next week instead? If you need the money urgently, please let me know. I feel terrible about this whole thing and I can cut you a check for my, from my personal account if need be. I'm so sorry about this. I assure you it won't happen again. Okay, that was Amy and then Matthew is... I don't like the look of this, not one bit. I know you've only been with us for a few months, but maybe you're aware of the prob of the trouble Amy has been having. A small mom and pop shop like Rose and Daughters can't compete with the bigger guys. Anyway, don't tell Amy I sent this to you. Also, I'm starving, so I'm going to grab some fast food before taking the hairs to the car wash. Two birds, one stone, and swinging back to home. You want anything? A beef and cheddar? I'm going to take the hearse through the drive-thru, of course. Freaks people out. I love it. They got so awkward. Let me know. I'm heading out in 15 minutes. <laughs> I still don't know how it's pronounced. But I'm pretty sure it's like the long car where you put the no? yeah, dead bodies. <laughs> you just like pull that up in a McDonald's and try to order a burger. And it just like stare at you like, is there a dead body? And you're like, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> That's like the kind of humor that I think Machu has. Anyway, let me just drink some water first. LGBTQ funerals respect. This is from Funerals Monthly again. Um, this is the monthly subscription letter that um, that Jennifer, like Jen Love, like um, subscribed us for. Uh, uh, anyway, 
If you've been a long time subscriber to our emails or follow us on social media, you've no doubt heard about the misgendering that transgender people are at times subjected to during their funerals. There have been notable situations where trans women have had their wishes overruled by their families. This is real, this is real. And have had their hair cut, are buried under the wrong names, and subjected to the wrong pran pronouns in their obituary announcements. We care about we care a lot about this because we believe in treating every person with the same level of compassion, respect, and care. And this absolutely extends to pronouns and respecting the deceased wishes as per their lived experiences. Yeah, it's really irritating like when you see it. Especially like um I, I don't think I've encountered like with you know with any even acquaintances, I guess. Oh wait, I think I did encounter something like that with an acquaintance. But it's too personal, so I'm not gonna be sharing it. But it's just it's not just it's not just I means gendering. It's like it's just real bad. It's just really bad. Anyway. The CDC's funeral director's handbook on death registration and fetal death reporting offers the fraud directive. Enter male or female based on observation. Do not abbreviate or use other symbols. If sex cannot be determined after verification with medical records, inspection of the body, or other sources, enter unknown. Do not leave this item blank. Leaving it up to death, leaving it up to observation obviously enters into a world of issues since bodies can be so different and because of ingrained bias. People can draw in incorrect assumptions based on their own inaccurate observations. California has passed what is known as the Respect After Death Act which states that a death certificate must reflect the deceased gender identity as they lived it. So, a step in the right direction, huh? People who are trans deserve the same respect in death that people who are cisgender receive. Uh, if you guys don't know what cisgender means, it's like, um, um, like, um, using the gender that you are born with. So, like me, I'm cisgender, like, I was born a female and I'm still a female, and then trans people are people who are like um born born into like a different into a different gender Bessie how can you explain trans quickly is your ass dying you go man anyway let's move on so what can we do as funeral directors? Listen to the people who come into your office. In America, especially some marriages may not be recognized as legal depending on the laws around same-sex marriage. Uh, like here in the Philippines, we still don't have a law that, you know, uh, enables us to like do same-sex marriage. But, still, but this doesn't mean you're not dealing with two people who have loved each other in the same way as another couple. Listen, learn, and always be respectful. While you have to work with the next of kin, your duty is also to ensure the deceased receives the utmost respect in their burial. If a funeral is to honor the deceased, then do that. Honor them. That's real. Was it was it constipation or was it diarrhea? Okay, I'm on it. Let's start doing the the next Oh wait, can I read the thing again? It was Doritos. Oh, it was Doritos. <laughs> Oh, died from breast cancer and they need a cremation. All right. Hello. Looks like you were free. Died from breast cancer soon. Oh my gosh, she's actually really pretty. Before we cremate, Mrs. Hall will need to prepare her body. Mrs. Hall's family brought clothing and jewelry for her to wear. It's important to remove these before the cremation process as to not damage them. Oh. Really? I thought you like included that in the cremation. But okay. Let's start by removing Mrs. Hall's necklace. Don't worry, Mrs. Did Hall. Did it not save? We will take care of this. Not save what? We need to be able to identify Mrs. Hall's remains after she's been cremated. Click and drag the round identification tag and place it in the coffin. Oh, so this this one doesn't get this one doesn't get like um, burnt, charred, or like you know roasted into dust. This thing, the the identification tag. Okay, so we're putting it in so that uh, we will still be able to you know identify her 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 remains. Great, Mrs. Hall is all set to be cremated now. Okay, Mrs. Hall. Wait, we didn't take off her her clothing. Just the jewelry? 
Okay. Door. Goodbye, Mrs. Hall. Have a um, have a nice, warm embrace of cremation. Okay, so we're done. I think this is her. She's in a vase now. This is the cremulator. Contrary to popular belief, cremation doesn't turn bodies into ash so much as bone. Really? I didn't know that. Is there a personal box? Keep the jewelry there? Yeah, yeah, we did like put it there. I'm not really a box, but there was just like a, a tray. We put the jewelry there. Anyway, so we need. Okay, using the cremulator, we'll break these bone fragments down into ash like remains. Oh, I actually really thought that, you know, when, when, when someone gets cremated, um, uh, it includes the bones and shit. So apparently not. They get like, you know, they get um, turned into ash by crushing them, I guess. No, no, keep the jewelry for yourself. Yasan, I am not a bird person and I don't really like jewelry, so I ain't keeping that. Plus, it came from a dead person. Respect the dead. <laughs> okay, so... Let's start place let's start by placing the urn in the cremulator. Okay, so we put it here. Click and drag the bone fragments and drop them into the top of the cremulator. Okay. Oh. oh my gosh. Turning into ashes. That looks like a banana though. Okay. okay. Alright, I think. Are we done or what is this? Do we have to now that all the bones have been processed, click and drag the urn back onto the counter. Okay. Make sure to put Mrs. Hall's necklace back into the urn. Click on the necklace. Oh, so it does. So it is included in the urn. It's just that we don't like um, burn it up in the cremation thing, in the in the big ass oven. Okay. Okay. Put it there. Can keep for me. Niosan no. Don't forget the tag. Click on the round identification tag and drag it to the urn. Okay. Okay. Last step. Click on the urn's lid and drag it on top of the urn. Okay. okay. All done. Eh? What's that? You go fall. Oh, wait, it's 4 chan. Oh, <laughs> I think, I think, um, Rat is like watching video essays again. Horror stories? Okay. All done! Amy will take the urn to the funeral parlor and present it alongside some flowers. Okay. Okay, let's go to their funeral now. Hello, hello! My mother said that when she dies, that once she dies, she wants to get cremated as well. She doesn't want people to like stare at her dead body. She wants like uh, she wants people to be to like to be able to remember her the way she lived and not the way she died. So I think that's like a cool thing. But for me, I don't really want to get cremated and shit. I want my body. I want my body to be given for you know for science or like medical shit. I'm gonna turn you into a plushie? Yeah, I just my, my ashes into like a stuffed toy or something. Damn. That's if you die before me though. Grr. Grr. This is nice in a weird way. She'd like that we're all here talking. She always tried to keep the family together. The food is delicious. I know that's weird, but these crab cakes are perfect. I felt that. I too appreciate funeral food. Glad she was cremated and not in like an open casket or something. Seeing her like that, I don't know if I could have. See, see, that's the point, that's the point. You try to like, um, it's like, it's like, it's like, um, keeping, 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 uh, keeping others away from any negativity that was like somehow caused by your death. It's like, it's, that's why like some people choose to be cremated. At least we all got to say goodbye. She would have liked that. This man is like shaking his head. Hello, sir. She fought really hard. She was proud of herself. She never gave up. Not once. Aww. Hello, ma'am. 
She would have hated this music. She never wanted her funeral to be sad. She would have wanted us smiling. She said so. I think that was also the same thing with my like with my grandfather. I never got to me got to meet any of my grandfathers actually, but my mother said that like when I don't I'm not sure if it was like when my grandfather or or when my grandmother died. She was like um um it was. Someone told them that they should be smiling. They should try to keep smiling, because that's not how their parents would have wanted them to be. Like to be grieving with all these sad faces and shit. They wanted they wanted um, their children to continue to be like smiling and stuff. Anyway, let's give our let's give our respects to Mrs. Hall. Anyway, if you do, <laughs> we do hear the background noise. That's rad. Oh wait, uh, can we- oh, I thought we could like write on the registration book. Apparently not. Alright. It's time for our next body. February 14, 10, 14 a.m. Oh, it's Valentine's Day! What do we get? What do we get? Oh man, this is a lot. Anyway, it's from here. Oh, that's pretty long. Let's go. Hmm. News about the future of Rose and Doris funeral. Hi all! It is with a very heavy heart that I write to let you all know that Rose and Doris will no longer be in business. I had no idea how to start this email and resources I googled told me that we would be the best and easiest way to- that that would be the best and easiest way to break the ice. Be direct but remorseful, Google said. The truth is, I don't really know what to say. Since my father passed away, I've done my best to make Rose and Daughters warm and friendly to anyone who chose to use our services. It was my memorial to him, the original Rose, in a lot of ways. And you've all become like family, including you, Charlie, our most recent addition. But it's been getting harder to make ends meet. Rent is going up in the neighbor. Uh, rent is going up in the neighborhood, and I'm finding less and less like I have the energy for this business. There's a lot of competition from other funeral homes, larger corporations than we are that can take on more business and offer more impressive services. You know the way it goes. Capitalism! Capitalism broke their, their business. So we've been bought. Or I sold. Oh, we've been bought. Oh, okay. Either way, Soon, Hillside Heritage Enterprises Incorporation, a company that owns many funeral homes in the city and across the country, will replace Rose and Daughters starting from the beginning of next month. Same building, same name, they're keeping the name Rose and Daughters Funeral Home for tax purposes. Though, honestly, I'm trying hard to, to, I'm trying hard not to just see it as a move on their part to keep up the image that it's a family-run business. Yeah, that's real. I mean, like, you know, you know, um, some people would um, often choose uh, a family-run business more somehow because it gives more of that like loving touch, that very personal touch um, compared to like big businesses, I guess. I don't know how I feel about that, but I also don't know if there's anything I can do at this point either. I've signed the papers. At least my father's legacy is still intact somewhat. They have a good reputation and have agreed to keep you all on. That was one of my stipulations. I would sell, as long as you all weren't without a job. Sorry, I didn't tell you in a more personal way. I would have loved to have a company lunch, but I admittedly, I didn't have the heart to tell you in person. This was easier for me. Please, understand. Sincerely, Amy Rose. Okay, um, so we read that. Okay, this, I think... Is this our next one? From Margarita Hall. Oh, this is the... This is... Oh, this is the sister of Mrs. Hall. The one we just, like, uh, cremated. Hi, Amy. I am so eternally grateful that you were able to accommodate our request for my sister's funeral. It was a beautiful service, and she would have been happy with it. That's such a weird thing to say, isn't it? Thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Sincerely, Margarita. Charlie, I thought you'd like to see this thank you note. Okay, okay, next one. Cremation again. Okay, let's see. 
Hi, Amy. You asked if there were any special instructions we wanted to pass along. Well, just please cremate my father. He has a pa he has pacemaker too. The doctor told me that that will need to be removed. Hi, Charlie. Please see the note below about a the pacemaker. They can be tricky. Oh, so we're about to take off a pacemaker from a person. Okay. Oop. This seems pretty long. Ryan Garcia to Amos. Hi, Hi, Amy. I know this email might be a bit odd, but you said if I was ever having troubles, I should reach out and you would know somebody I could talk to about all of this. I just... I don't know what to do now. I know my grandmother had lived a full good life and was very happy and she's not in any pain now. Oh, so is this from Mrs. Garcia? Anyway. But I still... I feel empty, Amy. I've never felt this empty before. What am I supposed to do now? I thought I was stronger than this. Can you refer me to someone to talk to? I don't want to freak out my mom right now. She's dealing with enough with work and the will and trying to... Just be the best mom she can. I just need somebody to tell me that it'll be okay. Thank you, and I'm sorry for being an inconvenience, Ryan. Okay, okay. So this is what Amy said. I thought I would forward this to you. In situations like this, we typically connect Ra uh, people like Ryan with a grief counselor or other professionals who can really help him. Sometimes we get emails like this when people don't know where else to turn. It's difficult, and family isn't always the most reliable for some people. Usually, I would be happy to connect him, but I'm feeling a little tired today. Not my usual self. It would be good for you to start building these kinds of relationships on your own. You're a treasure, Charlie. Okay. Oh! From our favorite BFF, Jen Love, Jennifer Valentine. Charlie, I've been playing a new game and things are slow at work. It's called Tales from the Creep Crypt Sweeper. Get it, get it? It's like Minesweeper, but way harder. Like seriously, it's really, really difficult. And I thought my Minesweeper game was on point after working that overnight front desk job at that hotel, hotel for three years. But I must have gotten rusty. Oh, that interest is taking a pacemaker. Yeah, yeah. Like, how are we supposed to do that thing? Do, do we need to start operating and shit? But anyway, we'll know in a bit. I, I just really like reading the emails. Anyways, instead of mines, you want to avoid graves so you don't disturb the adorable ghost. The main character also kind of looks like you. Want to start a healthy competition? High score gets to pick the restaurant we go to when one of us is in town next. I love her so much. She's such a slay. Okay, now we're gonna be reading the one from the, from the subscription. Keep on protecting Earth with green burials from Funerals Monthly. You've lived your life mindful of the environment, doing your part to reduce pollution, and generally help out where you can. So why not continue doing that even in death? At least that's a thinking for a lot of people who are turning to green or natural burials. Natural cemeteries are becoming more popular and are, fo and are focused on a few rules. Mainly is that bodies aren't allowed to be embalmed with chemicals that can damage the environment, and bodies must be buried in a biodegradable shroud or casket. Not only is this better for the environment, it's also cheaper! At Union Cemetery in Ontario, Canada, a natural burial is just over a thousand dollars? Jesus Christ, that's like so expensive still for us, I guess. So better for the people, the environment, just maybe not so good for big business. Let's not forget, people, this is still a business after all. But really, why go green? Green burials help preserve natural resources, work to reduce carbon emissions, protect the health of those preparing bodies, and restore and preserve natural habitats. Embalming fluids tend to contain formaldehyde and funeral, directs, uh, funeral directors report a higher incidence of leukemia. Going green and not using toxic chemicals for embalming helps protect funeral directors while at the same time lessening the impact we have on the environment after we're gone. We're here at Funerals Month. We here at Funerals Monthly think green burials are pretty cool. What do you think? Reply and let us know. Okay, so let's start the pacemaker thing. So, Sir Reyes, I guess? Sounds good. I'll take care of it. Okay. Oh, hello, sir. 
So he needs a cremation, but we need to take the basement grounds. Shouldn't we be like putting him there? Oh, oh, we're gonna operate him here. Okay. Mr. Reyes came directly from the hospital, so we don't have to worry about removing any valuables from him, as the family did not provide any for us to include. Okay. However, Mr. Reyes has a pacemaker that we'll need to remove before cremation. Couldn't they have just like taken the pacemaker out in the hospital? Or is that really our job? Anyway, because pacemakers are batteries, they will explode inside the hot heat of the cremation machine. And we definitely don't want that. Let's start by removing Mr. Reyes' pacemaker. Click and drag the scalpel, this is the scalpel, over the heart to make an incision. Alright. You can see the pacemaker. Click on the forceps to click and drag the pacemaker out of the heart. Okay. Oh, 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 it's so small. Put the forceps away, then place the round identification tag in the coffin. Okay. Huh, you know I thought hospital is the one who does it. Yeah, yeah, right? It's like, hmm, hmm, meh. Oh my god, I just saw a notification from Mr. VTuber carves a, pum a pumpkin with hand cap. I'm gonna watch that later. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I love Mr. Okay, Mr. Reyes, yeah, let's cremate Mr. Reyes now. Oh. Must have been a hard life or not. But, like, having a pacemaker is a hard life, right? Anyway, we have cremated them. Now it's time for us to, like, oh, um, like, like, Crush those bones. Okay, cremulator. Cremulator. I keep forgetting what it's called. Using the cremulator will break these bones down into ash like remains. Okay, so place her here. Then we put the bones. Get in there. Oop. Out of you. Shoot. Shoot. I, I can't drag it. Hola. I can't drag the other bone. Oh no. Oh no. Is this a bug? Oh no. Okay, let me just like, take it out. Take it in. Oh my god, I can't move it. I think it is a bug. Oh no. Oh, now I can. Oh my gosh. Ah, put, put our urn back on the counter. Okay, let's put the identification tag and then put on the lid. All done. Amy will take the urn to the funeral parlor and present it alongside some flowers. Okay, let's go. Let's head now to the funeral parlor. Okay. Hello, people. What are they doing? Are, are they are they lesbians? I need to know. What's up? Why are you so close to each other? Did you end up clearing the air? Oh, oh, oh! They're spilling some tea. Did you ever end up clearing the air with your father? No, we talk a few times, but no, not really. I mean, you know what? There are still times where even if a dead person dies, you did, you know, you, you miss the chance to be able to say a lot of things. And it's a normal thing. But you don't have to like put yourself too down about it, I guess. Fun fact, you can hear pacemaker thinking, ticking if the surrounding area is quiet. Really? How do you know that? Why do you know that, Mr. Yosan? Do you have a pacemaker? Oh, got an uncle who got one and I heard it ticking for. Oh my god, damn. Sheesh! Sheesh, is it. it oh my. Like, it, uh, does it tick like like an alarm clock? Does it tick like that? That's, that's kind of cool, I guess. <laughs> he sounded like a difficult man. He was stubborn. That's just it. Stubborn. So this is him, right? Let's talk to these people. What do you want to do after this? That's pretty nice out. Let's change and go find a patio somewhere. Sounds good. I could use. I could really use a beer right now. Hey, did I ever tell you the time we tailgated? Damn, this man's kind of kind of out of it. Let's talk to him. I always told him to quit smoking, but of course he never listened to me. So that figures. Mood. Depend on how hard his heart is beating. Oh, okay, okay. I actually, I actually don't know how pacemakers work. But like, what do they do? What are they supposed to do? I know they're related to the heart, but I don't know how how they work. I wonder if he ever liked me. 
He was nice to me, but I don't know. Never seemed like he really cared if I was there or not. Is this like the the wife or anyway, let's pay our respects to Sir Garcia. I hope you have a good afterlife. No idea, all I know is that it takes. <laughs> okay, okay. Alright. February 28th, 10.35. Oh wait, so is the February 14th one Mr. Garcia's body? Anyway, let's go. Let's move on, guys. Oh, we have fewer... <laughs> we have fewer emails now. Hi, Amy. I just wanted to thank you for the service the other month and apologize if I was abrupt. It was kind of a shock for me and I didn't feel comfortable with the whole process. He wasn't supposed to die yet. It hasn't been easy. Thought I'd pass this along to you. Okay, okay. Jen! <laughs> mushrooms! I love mushrooms too. My favorite character in all of this shit. You hate mushrooms so much, I found a perfect thing for you. I've been thinking about death. I know, shocker. Look, look what you've done to me. I think I want this mushroom suit. No, it's not called that. But I can't remember the name of it and I'm writing you on my phone so I don't feel like googling it right now. Anyways, the idea is that it's a biodegradable suit that, dece that the deceased wears. It's made with what people call a biomix. Hey, um... I, I, what's this IE in example? Is, is that how it is? I, I don't know what IE means actually. I've been seeing that all my life but I still don't know what it fucking means. Anyway, mushrooms and other microorganisms that help to decompose bodies, neutralize toxins in the body, and provide nutrients for the soil for, uh, for the soil for plants. I think this one company even offers casket liners for using green caskets. I think this is what I want. It'll be just like Hannibal. <laughs> Girl. Wait, don't tell people I said that, okay? But seriously, it's pretty cool. I love all the death innovation happening. We might as well do something when we're in the ground, you know? Love you. Think about it and let me know your thoughts. I want all of your thoughts. If it's not this, then maybe I'll have my ashes made into jewelry. But seriously, I'm probably going to do this. There's no harm in planning ahead, am I right? Yeah, it really is. There's no, there's no harm in planning ahead. Uh, actually, um, I, I told my therapist about like plans about. <laughs> Sorry, my my mom went in. Anyway, I actually told my therapist that uh, me and my parents. Uh, we do we do casually talk about death uh, and more casually how how we want how we want uh, well, like well, well, whatever we want our bodies I, 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 I can't think of the story like how we want to to like how we want other people to handle our bodies once we die like it's it's like we, we don't it's not like we don't consider it as a negative thing and then my therapist was like yeah it's it's good like it's good that we were like talking about death like this because it's something that you shouldn't be afraid of but it's also not something that uh, we should look forward to or try to come to in a way so yeah and she was like that's good that's good uh, people should be like more open about uh, you know, talking about how how they want their bodies to get handled. Like, do you want to be cremated? Do you want to wait? Do you not want to wait? Do you want to give your body to like, to 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 medical peeps or to research stuff like that? So yeah. Anyway, let's read the last one. This is a subscription letter. Things to avoid saying at a funeral. Welcome back. Now we rarely do listicles here, but for this month's newsletter, we thought a listicle would be the best way to deliver this month's advice. What not to say at a funeral? We know figuring out the right thing to say to a grieving friend can be extremely difficult. And since that's such a personal issue, it's hard to give specific advice. Some things will be more comforting to other people. But fortunately, we can deliver a little bit more solid advice on what 
to not say to someone with screaming. So here it is. Funeral monthly stop five things to not say at a funeral. Number one, at least they're no longer suffering. Even if this is true, nobody wants to hear this. It's probably not your place to dictate. Who wants to be told that the death of somebody they love is for the best? Like I said, even if it's true, don't be that jerk and just don't say it. Number two. Oh my god, I felt this. Were they sane? No religious statements. No, just don't. Why? Because not everyone agrees with your religious views. And not only is not and, and not only is not always comforting, it can also be insulting. Real. 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 It's like saying like like uh, like oh my god, this is reminding me of like when you when you like the time when people just keep saying, Oh you should just start praying you should start praying more like when I when I like um came out for being depressed and shit. But yeah. Don't say, don't say this. Do not, do not ask. Were they saved? Did they, did they, did they, like, or like, they deserve to die? Like, stuff like that. Like, because of, because of, like, religion shit. Like, oh, it's because they didn't go to church that much. That's why she died from, like, a heart attack or something. Don't, don't do that. Oh, my God. Number three. They're with the angels. <laughs> See above's note, then rinse, repeat. Oh my god. Number four. Let me know how I can help. This one is tricky. You want to help, but those in mourning won't always ask for help. If you want help, suggest specific things. For example, I'm free if you need someone to babysit the kids. Actions are better than passive statements. Oh, this is actually one that I need to like, take note of. Cook something for them. Take them to their favorite restaurant or buy tickets to see a movie together. Number five, I know how you feel. Even if you think you do, everyone grieves differently. Don't focus this on yourself. Empathy doesn't involve having to commiserate. I don't know what the word commiserate means. Sometimes people, does this do it? Does anyone in chat know? Anyway, sometimes people will want to hear your experiences, but don't assume they will. Ask first. For a quicker version of this list that can be applied in any situation, don't say stuff just for the sake of saying stuff. Yes, exactly. Just say I'm sorry if you don't know what else to say. Yeah, it's better to keep your mouth shut than just like, like you you may feel like it's awkward and it's too quiet and you just start like um, spitting out all these words, maybe like spitting out any of these statements. And it's just, just don't, just, just keep to yourself. It's better to stay quiet than saying stuff just for the sake of saying stuff to like break the silence and shit. Anyway. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. Our son. Good day, Miss Rose. Disregard our son's will as it concerns matters of his burial. He was clearly not thinking right and didn't know what he really wanted. Proceed with an open casket funeral. As for payment, we'll bring a check. Oh no, I think this... Okay, this is gonna be a bad thing. <laughs> Charlie, I was hoping you wouldn't have to confront this situation. Yet, anyways, they're never easy. Rose and Doris has been asked to prepare the body of a young man who took his own life. Oh no! He had the will prepared and asked for cremation, but the family has demanded a traditional burial instead. Fortunately, he didn't make anyone his power of attorney. Ah, unfortunately, he didn't make anyone his power of attorney, or didn't have any witnesses sign his living will or his advance directive regarding these wishes. So his family is legally in the right to do whatever they want with his body. It's unfortunate, but. We have to do with his family wishes. Okay. I'm gonna say a bad thing. But like it's not really a bad thing if you're you know, it's a general thing that if you if you have a wheel, if you have a will, make sure that it is you know what, what did she say about it? The 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 worst attorney thing. Like make sure that you have witnesses, make sure that you have a power of an attorney ship, yeah, a lawyer. So that no one could like, um, 
uh, overpower, I guess, your will and stuff. So that's that's something you need to take in mind. It's never it's never too late to write the will. It's never too early to write the will, honestly. So yeah, like I said, it's okay to like prepare for these things. You know, it, it's not it's not you don't even have to be like dying. You don't even have to be dying, or you don't even have to be like depressed or shit. Just like being prepared for the future is you know. A good thing when it comes to stuff like this, especially when you like, you know that your family may be, uh, you know, a bad bunch, and you know, they, especially if you're like you're part of the LGBT and they don't respect your your will, make sure that you have the power of the attorney and have witnesses sign, you know, to so that they won't be able to overpower your will. Anyway. Matthew has graciously offered to take this on if you are uncomfortable with the subject. Instead, we have a second body you can prepare for the funeral we're hosting later in the afternoon. Charlie, is this suicide something you're comfortable dealing with? Let me know. I'm here if you need me. Yes, I'm comfortable with this. I I actually like that you can you can choose whether or not you're comfortable with dealing. Uh, with a body that's, you know, someone who has committed suicide. Because some people might find that kind of thing, like, triggering for them in the game. So it's it's a good thing that you are enable- that the game enables us to say yes or no. The deceased family has asked for an open casket burial. Let's start by cleaning the body. Okay, don't worry. I know how to clean the body now. I have memorized the thingies. Shave the body. Yes. You are one hairy, sir. Okay, now we have to massage to break the rigor mortis. Gotta gotta keep those those body that body soft. Insert those eye caps. Now we're gonna be gluing your eyes shut so that you don't open and wink at us. Okay, put cotton balls into the mouth. Then we're gonna be suing it. So anyway, we put the cotton balls because like the cheeks go down. Or sag or like go in. So we need to like fill the mouth with cotton balls. Anyway, we gotta moisturize their body. Here it is. Moisturize, moisturize. Moisturize the body. Okay, then make an incision. Oh sorry. Okay. Then put the tube. Then the canu can canula? Cane canula. And then put more tubing. Oh, 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 okay, there we go. And then, um, let's say like, press. We're gonna really massage the body while we're like draining out the, the blood and putting in the, the formaldehyde. Is this the formaldehyde? Did I get that right? You know, the chemicals that we need to put inside the body for them to be preserved and stuff. Anyway, just. Just keep pushing gently, gently. This is the last massage they're ever gonna get, so we must be careful and give it our best. Um, it must be done with love and affection. Okay, now we're gonna sew the incision. Okay, and then we get the trocar and then drain the organs of any other fluids. Okay, drain, drain, drain. I don't think I'm gonna be able to like survive a mortician's life. I like, I, I like gore, but I can't take being in the presence of an actual dead body. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are like that, you know? All done. Mike will take care of Mr. Scott's makeup as well as dressing and putting him in his casket. Bye bye, Mr. Scott. Okay. Oh, never mind. We'll be going to your funeral now. Okay, let's go. Oh, it's an open casket. Oh, okay, okay. Let's see, let's see what they say. This is the person that committed suicide. Quiet sobs. They're just like crying. I wish we were closer. Wow. I still can't believe this is real. My baby brother. Should have played more games with more games with him when he asked. I Ah, uh, yeah. 
as the thing you regret but it's it's not you know it's not we we, we can't we can't we can't like do anything about it anymore what's done is done the best thing you could do is like think how you're gonna move forward from here okay let's talk to these guys I heard it wasn't going to be an open casket. I'm surprised it's public. Usually, funerals for these these circumstances are more private. Yeah, they should have like you should have respected his wishes too. I still can't believe he did it. I I feel like I should have known, you know, been able to do something to stop it. There was no way to know. You can't blame yourself. He wouldn't have wanted that. I I know. I know. It just. It's, it's just it hurts yeah yeah I I know I'm so sorry for the background noises Red is still watching YouTube videos anyway may you rest in peace all that hurt it's gone now March 3 10 45 a.m. Go read our email. I'm done fixing some shit up. I walk so slowly though. Okay, let's go, let's go. Chad Grant, okay. Hmm. We are pleased to bring on Rose and Daughters as part of Hillside Heritage Enterprises Incorporation. There will I they will be another institution amongst hundreds of other properties across the country. But of course, as part of the adjustment process to the Hillside Heritage Enterprises Corporation culture, there will be a number of changes that will come to Rose and Daughters. We will send out the memo regarding the specifics and details of these changes, and we expect them to be followed impeccably. Glad to, the, to be the lead to be the leading sad to be leading the, the one leading the way for Rose and Daughters from now on. Okay, okay. Alright. What the hell? Can I just say first off that this is bullcrap? Ugh. Knowing how these corporations run, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're monitoring their emails now. No. Okay. I don't really believe that. I'm just upset. I get that Amy didn't have much of a choice. You can only fight a huge corporation taking all of your business for so long. This isn't six feet under. And they just swooped in and now we have to deal with their BS practices. They're colder than the corpse I picked up from the morgue this morning. Who charges this much for funerals? It feels dirty and exploitive. Let's grab a drink after work. I need to blow off some steam. And the emails aren't really the most appropriate place to do this. Too late for me, I guess. P.S. If you're reading this, Hillside Overlord, good. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Let's read this last. Okay, this is from Jen again, our favorite girly. You're invited- oh wait, let's read this. You're invited to attend a death cafe. Come increase awareness of death with a view to helping people make the most of their finite lives. Join us, have a tea and cake and talk with others about our thoughts, fears, and illuminations on death. The founder of the death cafe movement, John Underwood, once said, When people talk about death and dying, it tends to illustrate it, it tends to illustrate uh, it tends to illustrate their humanity. See everyone at the upside down jar next Thursday. Okay, now let's read um what Jen has to say about this. Can't really write much right now. I have a lot of work. I have to do with an in inguinal hernia from 1750 as the oldest in our collection. And you can even see this bit of paper the surgeon put in after removing the hernia. Super cool! I'll send you the link when we have it cataloged. <sighs> what is my life? What is that sentence I just typed? But anyway, this event that I'm forwarding you is taking place near you. Figured you'd be into it. Might help with that feeling of restlessness you were talking about before. Could be good to talk about some of the things you're feeling. Lots of death positive people there. Sounds like it'll be a safe place. A safe space. Chan L. Okay. Different funeral traditions. Funeral rites, even in our own culture, may Maybe be something many of us may be unfamiliar with. For many people, all they know of funeral traditions are what they've seen in media. 
But, and I think this goes without saying, funeral rites and traditions aren't the same across the board. Different cultures have different protocols for cleaning the body to different aspects of the service itself. Religion provides different paths for dealing with the death. But, the goal is is almost always the same, offering support, guidance, and ease to the people who are grieving. In Judaism, interment usually begins immediately after somebody has passed. Up until burial, the body is never supposed to be alone. So often, families will appoint a shomer, a guardian, to remain with the body. Preparations for burial begin as soon as possible in Muslim traditions as well. Local Islamic community organizations are also often involved and help the family make arrangements for the funeral service and burial. But not all practices are strictly religiously focused. In the odds in, in the odds, how do you pronounce this? Oh my god, in South Korea, the amount of graveyard space began to shrink drastically, causing a law to be passed that required families to remove a loved one's body from its burial place after 60 years. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Many families began to cremate more often, but there are also companies that compress remains into beads in turquoise, pink, or black called death beads. This also occurs in North America, Europe, and Japan, but remains much more common in South Korea because of the space issue in graveyards and expensive cremation. Not, and not all practices are somber either. Ever hear of turning off the bones or famatihana, a ritual by the Malagasy people of Madagascar? Famantihana has families return to an, in, an ancestral crypt, exhume the bodies wrapped in cloth before dancing with the bodies to lively music. Oh, sheesh. This practice is a celebration, remembrance, and way of keeping the deceased involved in family news. Aw, wait, let me just drink some water. I'm running out of saliva. This can be a difficult time for many people, obviously, but that doesn't mean there isn't a beauty in the ways we choose to honor and celebrate our deceased. Okay, now we're going to be reading uh, our customer for today. Cremation. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Grant, for agreeing to take care of Jocelyn's cremation. The bike accident was, well... It was more than I was expecting. I know she wanted to be cremated, and to be honest, I don't think I could bear seeing her like that after what happened. Thank you, Leia. Charlotte, deliver the details of her for our next client. Ensure you follow the requested specifications exactly. After you are done, I will review your work in order to properly evaluate you at the end of the month. I'll get right to it. Okay, it's time. Okay, so they so they want to get cremated. We'll have to take out their valuables first, right? Prepare Miss Ionesco's body for cremation. Okay, I'm taking out this. Place the round identification tag in the coffin and they're prepared for cremation now. Feel the fire swarm embrace as you are delivered into the afterlife. Okay, let's go to the urn, drag these bones to the cremulator. Oh wait, I need to place the urn first. Okay, place there. Turning them into ash. Let me put it back here. Oh, this vase has like birds on it. Okay, so we put on the watch. Then the identification tag, then put on the lid. All done! Macho will take Miss Unesco's urn to the funeral parlor and present it alongside some flowers. Okay, let's go. Let's go to the funeral. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, okay. Should we do a vigil at the spot? Careless drivers, I swear to God. Oh no. Hello, hello. I'm glad I'm here. But wow, I just need a glass of wine and to binge watch something right now. But to, to keep their Chinese pottery. Oh, oh, really? Okay, okay. I have to go through all of her things. How am I supposed to decide what to keep? If you need help, I can help. No, thanks. I mean, but no. I don't know. It's so intimate. 
Feels like I should do it myself. She would kill me if others saw the things we have. Oh, I mean, yeah, true, true. <sighs> yeah, she was kind of a close book, except to you. Yeah, yeah, she was special. Aww. It was caused by an accident. So glad it was a cremation. I would have lost it seeing her body. Mm. Another reason why people would like choose to get cremation is that to like not see whatever happened to their, you know, the bodies. If it's like an accident or if it's, it was like, you know, something like murder, shit like that. Or even a suicide, I guess. Like people not wanting others to see their bodies in general. I like after death. She was always so careful, wore her helmet, signaled, used to bike lanes. Asshole drivers, they need to pay attention. Have you heard what's happening to the driver? No, I haven't wanted to ask Leia. This has been hard enough on them, without asking about all the legal ramifications of all of this. Yeah, after all this, let's see what we can do to help them. Shouldn't deal with the death of their partner all by themselves. Oh, this is the partner. This is the partner of the one who died. Oh my god. I'm so sad. I wait, let me just like give my respects. I hope you were able to live a wonderful life even though it was cut short by an asshole driver. Okay, let's now go outside. March 24, 10:30 a.m. Oh, okay. The, the game is actually taking longer than I expected because uh, supposedly the game is all, it should only like last an hour. But we've been here for like an hour and 30, 30 plus minutes. Okay. Uh, hmm, for worse of it. Also, my. my um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but. <laughs> <laughs> my 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 VTuber model has been lagging lately, which is kind of rad. Lots of reading, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I do enjoy the reading. Okay, rules and code of conduct. Okay, okay let me just say. Okay. Hello. As stated in a previous email, here are the new rules and code of conduct I expect you to follow from now on while on any premises belonging to Hillside Heritage Interpreters eh, Enterprises Incorporation. First and foremost, there is a required uniform and strict dress code from now on. Second most importantly to this is that no tattoos are to be visible. If you have visible tattoos, oh no, we have visible tattoos. Fuck it, we have to cover them? Fuck this bitch. What's the tattoos gotta do with all that work? Uh, if you have visible tattoos, ensure they are properly covered and hidden. When speaking with customers and clients, consider the the opportunity to upsell. Oh my God, they are such bitches! Always encourage the deceased loved ones to purchase the higher quality package. You guys are so fucking mean. What the fuck? I hate capitalist bitches like these. We find it encouraging loved ones to think of the comfort and style of the deceased as an experience with no price limit on it. Additionally. Yeah, fuck this corporation, for real. Additionally, food is no longer allowed to be brought in. Instead, encourage the deceased loved ones to purchase our premium sandwich and appetizer food package. Ah, uh, oh no, this is, this is taking me out. Our partner catering concepts provides high quality food that will be delivered or uh, de be delivered weekly from their factory and can easily be defrosted the morning of the funeral. I expect all of the above changes to be instituted effective immediately to ensure a smooth transition into the high quality services Hillside Heritage Enterprises Incorporation is known for. I fucking hate this. I don't think Amy will like this either. Okay, so now we're gonna be talking. Charlie, I need a drink. Beer after work? P.S. All I really want. Uh, also, I really want mozzarella things. Meh. Mozzarella sticks. I want mozzarella sticks too. Actually, we have mozzarella right now, but I don't have bread. Oh, wait. I can like put it on the mantau. Hmm. Should I put it on the Should I put mozzarella on the mantau? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I'll, I'll do some of that. I'll like steam up some mantau later and then just add mozzarella on the top and shit. I can be both angry and <laughs> hungry and angry. And no, I will not say hangry ever. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is. 
Okay. Green burial policy. Hello, Charlotte. I have reviewed your request on behalf of a potential inquiring, uh, a potential family inquiring if we at Hillside Heritage Enterprises Incorporation can and will perform funerals. I should have informed you of this in the beginning, but we do not pre perform green funerals as they are not cost effective. Oh my god, they really are being bitches about this. All employees and subsidiaries of Hillside Heritage Enterprises and Corporation must comply. We do not wish to lose potential customers. Though, so do try your hardest to convince the families requesting green burials to instead choose a traditional burial package, complete with embalming caskets and vaults instead. I trust you will ensure we do not lose an- Can't I just quit this job? Can't I just like, quit here? And then move to another like family owned, you know, funeral parlor. This shit is irritating. I'm gonna read this later. Uh, let's read Jen and Jen first and then the funeral subscription thing. <laughs> Dr. Zayas? I just saw a video of a gorilla walking on its index. Like a human being, Charlie. A human being. We, as a species, have seen the beginning of our end. You go, girl. Okay. Home funerals. Why do it? The appeal of a home funeral is apparent for many, especially if the deceased was somebody very close to you. The idea of keeping them at home until they are ready to be buried or cremated can be comforting. It wasn't that long ago that we were taking care of our own deceased. But nowadays, people are quick to pass off their loved ones to a funeral home. Most families aren't given the option and assume this is mandatory. Funeral homes will always and will almost always prepare the deceased using embalming and other methods to make them appear more alive. But isn't this process counterintuitive to the grieving process? Being around a deceased allows the bereaved to spend a longer period of time with their loved one's body, which can help them mourn or give them opportunities to family members and friends to see the deceased one last time before they are taken to be buried or cremated. The idea of keeping the deceased body at home might sound gross, but it's important to understand that the composition takes a long time, and you can further slow this process by keeping your home cool and dry. To be around your loved ones and to see them decay naturally is an important part of the grieving process. Home funerals aren't just more intimate, but they are economical. A traditional funeral complete with body preparation, service, flowers, cars, and many other hidden costs and fees can cost upwards of 7000 to 10000 when you're able to take care of your loved one yourself, to wash and dress them, and to organize their viewing from home. The only cost remaining is entirely in the cremation or burial itself. However, it's important to understand that different rules apply given on what state you live in. In all states, it is legal to have your loved one's body at home after they die. Uh, states like Alabama, Connecticut, Illinois, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, Nebraska, New Jersey, New York require a funeral director's involvement, from signing the death certificate to overseeing burial or cremation. If this is a route you decide to go for yourself or your loved ones, make sure you follow everything by the book. But just know that this is maybe an option available to you or you and your loved ones if you so choose. Okay, now we're going to read our customers thing. Latest contract acquisition, the city. Charlotte, I am proud to announce that Hillside Heritage Interpre uh, Enterprises Corporation received a contract with the city to dispose of any unclaimed bodies. This is an important revenue stream for us, as I'm sure I don't need to explain to you, Charlotte. Although Hillside Heritage Interpre uh, Enterprises Corporation is being paid as a decent wage from the city for these services, Cremation is preferred here, as it is the more cost-efficient of the two options. The first unclaimed body we will be handling belongs to a middle-aged man, possibly homeless, whose body has yet to be claimed. No special preparations are needed for this cadaver aside from cremation. They are so heartless, they, they, talk, they talk so coldly about it, it's bothering me actually. Oh wait, <laughs> I forgot I have to reply. I'll take care of it. Oh wait, I wanna see what's on the thing. Anyway, let's cremate this man. Unclaimed bodies just make me sad. 
Before Rick remains this gentleman, we'll need to repair his body. Does not seem to have any valuables on him that would be damaged during cremation, so let's just worry about putting his identification tag into the okay. This gentleman is all set to be cremated now. Have a nice afterlife. Here, you shall sleep, and the fire shall embrace you with all its warmth and love. Okay, now let's go to the bones. Okay, okay, using the prime leader. Okay, we put the urn first. He doesn't even have like the signs on his urn. Ah, maybe like our boss doesn't want them to have like the signs and shit. Because you know, they aren't paying for this. Uh, the government is okay. Sorry. That's my that was my alarm. Let's put it back here. The identification tag. Put the lid. You know, okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Wait, but it's an un but it's a <laughs> excellent song for alarm. Yes, I do be breakdown breakdown. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I knew there would be no one here. It's an unclaimed body. I was like, wait, we, we can we, oh, Can we talk? Oh, this is making me sad. I don't want to go yet. I, I don't want to go. There's not even, there's, I think this is the saddest thing that can happen to you, you know? Like, you should have at least have like one person. Or like two paying respects to you after you die, but like being an unclaimed body, having having no visitors and shit, no one no one caring for you enough to like check on you if you're dead or not. That's, that's just too sad. Anyway, I'm gonna like pay my respects to them one last time before I like head off. I hope you rest well. Rest in peace. April 9, 10.19am okay, okay, let's check our email Wait, did they like make They didn't like make us change our clothing though Because they said the, the The tattoos aren't supposed to be visible right But you know Our tattoos are still visible here Anyway, let's go check the emails Latest contract acquisition, hospital. Okay. Hello all, we are thrilled to announce that Hillside Heritage Enterprises Corporation, subsidiary Rose and Daughters, just signed a contract with Morning Valley Hospital, allowing us access to all of the cadavers that come through their pediatric and maternity wards. Jesus Christ! The children and the moms and the babies? We're excited for the opportunity to work with Morning Valley Hospital, which intakes over 1,000. You're excited about dealing with dead babies. Jesus Christ. 100,000 patients and receives over $15 million in funding and donations annually. This will no doubt be a boon for Hillside Heritage Enterprise Incorporated bright and sustained future. I fucking hate this man. Fuck you, Chad Grant. Fuck you. Okay, okay. This is Matthew. He's done. He's done. I'm done. Charlie, it's official. I put in my two weeks notice. You know how unhappy I am working for Mega Corporation 101. My skills, especially my driving ones, are useful in other professions. I'm not worried about myself. But you? You I am worried about. You're too good for this corporate scum. You actually care about the people you work with and for. Don't let them defeat you, okay? Yes. P.S. I'll bring beers over next week. We can talk a bit more freely. Aww. Bye, Matthew. I'll, I'll see you again sometime. Jen! It's here. It's here. I am. Okay. So. Okay, it's time to read Jen's letter. I kissed her! Dating a special effects makeup artist and she is like the coolest person I've ever met in my life. She totally loves Ava's possession and was equally freaked out by the possession scenes but so utterly delighted at the idea, at the idea of a support group for people, for people who have been possessed. 
That was your best representation in a while, Charlie. You were slipping there. I was getting worried you had lost your taste. But yeah, her name is Lily, and she's super damn positive. And isn't freaked out by my work. And also, isn't too into it? Like that last dude I saw. Jason? Michael? Gah, can't remember. I just really like spe- <laughs> Is Jason and Michael like a reference to those scary movies? <laughs> I just really like spending time around her. I can talk about whatever I want and it's never a conversation stopper. She also totally gets what I mean when I say that like working with Deb and spending so much time thinking about that actually makes me happier. It makes everything else feel so much more worth it, you know? Momentum Omari or whatever they taught us in that one poetry class we took. We just clicked! Feels good, fun, and affirming like Danny should be. I'm thinking of taking her to Maple Meadows. She's super into roller coasters, and I think the idea of sharing cotton candy, or maybe not, I don't want to throw up on the rides, is sickeningly cute! Then maybe I'll kiss her on top of a Ferris wheel and be corny and, and be super corny and cliche for once in my life. Anywho, enough about me for now. I'm still kind of in shock from your last email. You think you're going to do it? You know you have my support 100% no matter what you decide. What did we email her? I actually don't know. Okay. Funerals monthly. Water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. Water cremation. We can call it a few different things like flameless cremation, a bit of an oxymoron, but we'll let it slide. Or perhaps more commonly, resumation. It's technical name though, it's actually alkaline hydrolysis. Whatever we want to call it, it's here and it's an environmentally friendly alternative to traditional cremation. But for the sake of but for the sake of this newsletter, let's call it the water cremation. We all know that traditional cremation in burials take a huge toll on the environment. The high energy consumption that adds to the greenhouse gas effect being one of the chief amongst them. And water cremation is an alternative method available for the eco conscious amongst. <laughs> How does it work? It's basically a water-based chemical process that uses really strong alkali in water heated up very high, about 350 Fahrenheit. It basically works like a sped-up version of natural decomposition. The excess water gets put through the same water treatment process as any sewage water at a factory, and alkaline hydrolysis uses significantly less energy than traditional cremation processes. Neat, huh? It's been around for a bit, and in some places became legal around the end of the first decade of the aughts. Not a bad alternative for those who don't want their death to have any greater impact on the environment than necessary. That's actually cool. I might like look into this. I don't. I don't think anyone like anyone here in the Philippines does this. But maybe. Oh, we'll see. But like the process is process is, is like interesting. Okay, let's get to our. Next, uh, our next, um, oh Jesus Christ, is he trying to like get a, get them to not, not do a home funeral? I fucking hate Grant. Dear Mr. Grant, regarding the last time we spoke, my daughters and I would still prefer to host a home funeral ourselves and keep my wife here until she's ready to be buried. I just want to make sure she's taken care of. Her heart attack was so sudden. I... We don't know what to do. We just want to make sure she has a proper send off. Thanks. Kofi Dimka. Okay. Dear Mr. Dimka, I understand your desire to keep your wife at home, but I assure you the best way to honor your wife is through a traditional funeral package instead. I promise you, your wife's funeral with us will be a beautiful, intimate gathering where all of her beloved friends and family can come together and say their goodbyes. A standard and bombing will allow for everyone to view your wife, ensuring that everyone can see her one final time as she was. Beautiful, peaceful, and courageous. He's such... He's... He's a manipulator. He's a mansplainer. He's a manslaughtering bitch. <laughs> Letting us take care of the food with our prepared food service will ensure you don't have a single thing to worry about on this day. You and your daughters are going through a hard time right now. Let us hear at Rose and Daughters make this difficult time a little easier for you. I fucking hate this man. Okay, we'll take the traditional funeral package. Thank you for considering us in this hard time. Oh, no, he, he bit it. He bought the... <laughs> he bit the fucking bait. Okay. Charlotte, I see you were not able to convince the Dimka family to take a standard funeral. I had to contact them myself in order to not lose the sale. Oh, shut the fuck up, Grant. 
Please read the enclosed emails for a lesson on how to properly upsell potential customers. I don't want to see that we've lost any customers because of your refusal to upsell. That is part of your job. Sure thing, I'll get right to it even though I fucking hate this job now. Ah! Okay. It's time to embalm. We're properly suited for it now. The deceased family has asked for an open casting room. Let's start picking the body. Okay. Clean it with a sponge. Oh, they had to cover her titties. Okay, then we'll be massaging your body to break the break your rigor mortis. Gotta keep it soft. Insert the cap, the eye caps. Then we'll glue those eyes shut. And then put some cotton balls in the mouth so it doesn't like go inwards. And suture the the jaws. Moisturize the body even over the blanket, I guess. Okay. There we go. Make an incision in the neck. Open it up. And place some tubing where like the blood can go out. And let's place the cannula. And then connect the embalming machine to the, no, the cannula. Let's turn it on. And then let's massage her. While doing all these processes, taking out her blood, putting in that formaldehyde, making sure she's having a great relaxing massage, even though she's dead and she can't feel this. But like you know, last last best massage before you know we, we put you in the open casket and bury you down six feet under. Okay, just keep on pressing. Massaging, massaging, are you all goody? No, she's still not goody, we need to keep massaging. Okay, alright. Now we're gonna sew the incision close. Sewing the incision. Take out the fluids from her from her organs. There we go. Onion besting. I'm like draining her. Yeah. All done! Mike will take care of Mrs. Dimka's makeup as well as dressing and putting her in her casket. Okay. Now we go to the funeral. Now I'm interested what the family has to say about this because they wanted a home funeral but the fucking grand bitch, you know, just wants to upsell, wants to get money from people who are grieving. I know it's a business but it's still so fucking cold, you know. It's so cold in here. I think they have the air conditioning on too high. Yeah, let's go for a walk later. It's really nice out. It would be good to stretch my legs. Let's talk to these people. I'm starving. Why do these things always make me so hungry? You're always hungry. That's a mood. Same. Okay, how about these people? It feels so impersonal. She would have hated this. See? See? Saying the truth. Yeah, but I don't know. They must have had their reasons. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey! What did you think of that trailer I sent you? Oh yeah, I heard that show is so good. I saw that video of the one kid actor doing karaoke. Okay, how about this man who's shaking his head? Is this like... The guy? Is this the, the, the partner? Do you think we did the right thing? I feel bad not doing what mom asked for. Mood. I know, honey. But what that Chad guy said seems right. He got he got manipulated for real. I hate I hate Chad so much. That grand bitch should be the one who's like buried six feet under. Anyway, we don't want to dishonor her memory by letting her run. <sighs> yeah, I just want mom to know I love her. Wish I would I hadn't yelled at her before. Shh, it's okay. She knew you love her. Fights happen. Please, don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to miss her. Me too. Okay, let's give our respects. May you rest in peace. I really wished that you had a home funeral. Could have had a home funeral. But our boss is a piece of shit. Don't worry, I'll kick his ass for you. I'll kick his ass in your memory. Okay. August 30, 9 a.m. Oh! Oh, is this a new office? Did we finally quit? 
Oh my god, did we fucking finally quit? Let's go. Let's go. Oh my god. Congratulations. Charlie, dear, I am so proud of you. I knew there was something special in you when I hired you for House and Daughters. If there is anything I can do for you, please do not hesitate to ask. I am always happy to help. Best wishes, Amy Rose. P.S. I sorely miss you and Machu's terrible sense of humor. Machu. You'll never believe what new job I am working now. Open this email to find out. <laughs> I love Machu. Hey, Charlie. When I first became a hearse driver, I was told that my most important job wasn't steering. It was sympathizing. I respectfully disagree, and thankfully, I concentrated on my driving skills since I am now working as a wait for it bus driver. A school bus driver, Charlie. Can you believe that? Pretty sure if I said the most important part of my job now wasn't steering, I'd be fired immediately. <laughs> I didn't know how else to tell you. For some reason, I was worried you'd think less of me. But I don't know why you. You've never been the judgmental kind. And besides, corpses are way easier to deal with than children. <laughs> I mean, that's... I, corpses can't, like, you know, fight back. <laughs> and they, like, don't scream at you unless they're zombies, I guess. Corpses are uh, screaming children, might I add. I actually love it. These kids can be pretty cute. But don't tell Amy that I told you that. She was always harping on me for not having any kids and for being all cynical about them. <laughs> Grats on your new business, Charlie! I'm proud of you. I'll swing by your new place one day and, I, and show you my new wheels. Maybe we can grab a bite to eat. Be seeing ya, Matthew J. Okay, okay. Now it's time for us to read besties. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jen, let's go. Congratulations on your new business! Charlie, I am so happy for you. I know it's been a rough year for you. Seriously, I think our wine intake saw a bazillion percent increase. But you stuck through it all like a champ! You deserve this. Finally, being your own boss is a great boo for you. No more having to explain anything you don't want to. I'm trying to not be too cheesy right now. <sighs> Can't wait to be home next week for our visit and to check out your new space. Always, Jenna, you seem curator. P.S. Have you heard about these green burial pods? When I find a link in my 1 million open tabs, I'll shoot it over to you. Okay. Oh, oh, we got a customer. From Aileen Hansen. Dear Charlie, today's the day already, isn't it? I can't believe how quickly this has come up. Thank you for your understanding and for your work. You've made today easier already. See you at 1 p.m. I'll see you soon. What's ha what happens now? What happens now? Oh my gosh. Is this supposed to be the end? Oh, is she finally doing green burials? I'm so proud of her. Let's go. This hurts. I thought it'd be easier, but it's not. It hurts so much. Thank you for helping me give her the funeral she always wanted. Oh, it's because like the, you know, when we were in the, when Rose and Daughters got like sold to that fucking company, we weren't able to provide green boreals and we always needed to upsell. But now that we're our own boss, we are able to give the deceased what they wanted and, you know, um, be, be respected even though they're dead already. Anyway. I think we're ready to get started now. Okay, I think that's the end of the game. It, it was it was a nice ride. It, it was very chill, very informative as well. Like, uh, it's more of like yeah, it's very much like a tale. It's just like a story we have to go through. It doesn't have like that much of like gameplay but i still really appreciate stuff like this because i also used to make <laughs> i also used to make games like these where um it's very more of having you to get to get uh, having you to to be able to empathize with the with the with the character that you're playing as that's that's what i love about like 
doing game dev, like making narrative games, because I was more into narrative games. But I, I don't do game dev anymore. But still, this 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 made me all this made me all feel good inside somehow. And yeah, what what do you guys think about the game? Well, was it good for you? What do you think about death now? <laughs> do you think death is a bad thing, a good thing? How can it be bad? How can it be good? I think that like um, I already like said this before, but death is um. It, yes, it's bad. It, it is bad when it like because you lose someone that you may lose someone that's important to you, you know. But also, death is something that can bring people together. Death is also something that gives value to you know, value to to our lives. If there's no death, if it's always us living, there's there's no value in life. Yeah, it's just part of life, I guess. Real. Anyway. This this was a nice game. I really liked it. Now I know why it had like a lot of awards. <sighs> okay. I and I I think it's time for me to say goodbye. Say goodnight. It's already 10 p.m. Uh but let's see who's like who's still online so we can like raid someone. I'll I'll be like resting though after this. I mean like watching this stuff. <laughs> Or we could, could we could just like stop now? Yeah, I think we could just stop now. I don't think it's just someone I know was like who's on right now. Oh, see me is playing Hades. Hades. That's also like that's also death adjacent. So we might as well go there. Okay, I'll be sending you guys off to the CB now. Wait, CB. Ah, uh, wait. Huh? Why won't it show up? C B C B. <gasps> it won't show up. Or are they done? Are they done playing? Oh no! I was, <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> rain. <right now. laughs> are they done streaming? No. Wait. I think they're still streaming though. I'm not just looking at this. Thing. Oh no! I think they're done. Anyway, I guess I'll just like end the stream now thank you for everyone who came by i hope you also had a good um educational time with me if you haven't like followed me yet here are my socials you can follow my twitter for stream updates for uh, me retweeting things that i like and shit or just like talking about life stuff like that and then uh you can check my youtube for vods i upload my vods there and um, my scuffed covers and clips as well though i also have recently started uploading my clips on tiktok as well so yeah if you want to know more about me the link to my card is also there okay bye now everyone and death is not something we should be afraid of but it's not something we should look forward to i hope that somehow this this game has helped you guys you know think more kindly about death all right that's it for me bye bye everyone good night good night